one of many theaters that you are now producing, <laughs> one of many shows. Let's talk a little bit about it. We haven't caught up in a long time. We haven't, but I'm but glad Tony's to Tony's was last up. time. Yes, Congratulations. What Thank an exciting you. night. That was amazing. That was so great. And we caught up at the party after, yes. which was even better yes. because you caught the full moment of the shock that I was in, the near shock. Talk a little bit about what made you make this decision to go into producing, because I feel like that's always been something you've, you, you know how to do, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, it all started during COVID, um, when we all had to shift with what yeah. we were going to be doing. I was so just sort of really sad, mostly, because my industry had completely shut down. Right. For the first time in years, Broadway hadn't shut down. So I was trying to reinvent what I could do to keep myself active and creative and participate in the future of Broadway. David Stone, who was a genius producer behind Wicked, also is my mentor. And he brought me on to produce Top Dog Underdog with him and Kimberly Akimbo. And I wanted to knock it out of the park for him because I was so excited for the opportunity that I raised a bunch of money and I got very active in the, in the marketing meetings and just was so thrilled to be able to lend my 40 years of experience yeah. to the other side of the table. And it's been really a nice combination of what I've done and what I'm doing for producing. I want to go back to COVID because you and I, you know, in full disclosure, we had a we had a long conversation one morning on zoom yes we were all locked inside of our homes mm -hmm. and i remember that really really well and i feel like we were both pretty emotional on that call just kind of talking about like where are we and what's next yes. in, in the world and in in our lives and in the ages we were at and when i look at you today i'm i'm so i'm so you made me tear up i'm so proud of you because I, I i remember you very clearly like trying to you know knowing you had faith in, in your talent and your ability but you weren't sure exactly where it was going to go next yes I remember that conversation and it was a teary conversation yeah. because we all were stuck and not knowing what was next and being a woman you know of this age my midlife it's important to I still want to be active I still want to matter I still want to contribute positively to society but the industry is telling me oh you're aging out of certain roles that's okay actually what I'm doing is I'm aging into certain roles that's and I'm aging into this next role of my life as a Broadway producer and it's thrilling and I'm excited about it and I'm really good at it. You're really good at it. <laughs> I'm ev evidenced by all the marquees. Uh, Kimberly Akimbo, what really drew you to this show? The heart of this show. Okay. This show is so full of heart and, and it's relatable to everyone, not just the family in New Jersey right. in the 90s, right. but everyone can relate to this story because it's set in a dysfunctional family with normal, hilarious things that happen and the joy and the comedy of the show. It's the reason it won Best Musical. It's because it really lands to everyone. So I was so thrilled to be a part of a story that was inclusive and representative of all of us as human beings and as family members. I mean, it's just beautiful to see one show after another, all different shows, seeing them all kind of at the same time is, yeah. is, is very cool. So we're gonna take a tour. Wanna hit your next marquee? Sure. All right. Okay, so where are we now? We are now at Jaja's African Hair Braiding here at Manhattan Theater Club. I'm producing this along with Taraji P. Henson and Madison Wells Live. It is the play that I am so excited about producing this year because it's bringing in a whole new group of audience members that may want to go see some other shows. When you look over a, a script and you're, you know, just bringing something on for the first time, what, what are you looking at or what are you looking for? The first thing I ask myself is who would want to see this? Mm -hmm. That's the first question. Who would spend their money, their hard earned dollars to come in to a Broadway house and see a show and why would they? And, I, and if I can find that answer right away, then I go into does the story move me? Will people leave the theater feeling better about themselves or more enlightened? Those are the questions I ask myself when I choose a play. 30% of Broadway audience members since the, since, uh, the pandemic has been young new audience members. And so our mission as Broadway producers in our community is to engage new people and new and younger faces and stories that will bring a wide diversity of audience members into our theaters. When, when things are relatable, you know, bringing a new audience is really important. And I know it could be, you know, you don't, you don't know, you know, what age is or who's gonna come to the show. Did you know with this show that this was going to bring such joy? I, I feel joy. When I read the script, when I see the show, I feel the joy. So I like to think of myself as a typical audience member. What I didn't anticipate was the quick fire word of mouth. Everyone is talking about Jaja's and how you have to get over and see it yeah. before it closes. Jocelyn Bio, our writer, 
This is her Broadway debut. Yeah. Did she knock it out the park or what? Yes. I think she's gonna have a nice, healthy career. So I've, I'm just really happy that so many people are coming out and supporting theater and the new faces of theater. All right, here lies love. <laughs> lies love. Oh, I miss that voice. <laughs> I love this show. It is, it's infectious. You come see this show once, you want to see it again. Yes. We have people who have been here maybe 30 times. They love the show so much. I've been here quite a bit myself. Down on the dance floor, up in the seats, sitting in the galleys. I'm just really, I really love this show. This is such a different show. Yes, the it theater, is. The theater, it's like you go in and you're you're immersed in it. You really are. Well, that's the word. It is the yep. first immersive musical on Broadway, meaning you can participate or not. Yep. You can sit in the seats and be a regular, you know, theater goer, yep. or you can be on the dance floor with the cast, having a great time. We don't want people to think you're just going to come and dance and have a good time. Yep. We sneak in a little spinach yeah. in that mac and cheese. <laughs> We spent a little spinach greens. in there. They're a little green. So you learn about the history of the Marcoses and what what's happening, what, how the people feel about what's happening, the resistance, how important it is to the Filipino community that this story is being told. But it's for everyone. And the cast. And the cast is all Filipino. Mm -hmm. We're super excited about being able to do that. Yeah. And they're dynamic. I mean, the cast is just phenomenal. We're so thrilled. All right, now you have one more little announce, little announcement. What's our next marquee that's yet to, yet to be unveiled? Well, it was finally announced today. I and my business partner, Merely Fairbanks of Tima Productions, we are now producing The Outsiders oh. as well. That's coming in with Angelina Jolie in the spring. So I'm super excited about that. We're around the same age, so that I remember the book. I remember my tattered copy of the book. Oh. I remember the movie. And that's what drew me to it, the story of the, the, this group, this community of, of boys that had their struggles, their coming of age struggles. We all have our relationship yeah. to that story. I read it in middle school. Most high schoolers and middle schools have to read The Outsiders. So it's a personal, we all have a personal relationship to it. But the music and the dancing and the story combined of The Outsiders is just gonna take people by storm. Okay, so this theater has a special significance, extra significance yes, it for does. you. Yes, it does. The color purple. The color purple. I'm gonna cry when I say <laughs> the color purple. This is where we did the original Broadway production of The Color Purple in this theater. So. This is like a church to me. <laughs> it is. When I walk into this building, I feel like, oh my God, I'm coming home. Because that, that was so important for my career at that time. So it's a full circle moment for me.